So we said earlier that um, supply side policies, at least in my world, um, operate through factor markets. So that's labour markets, capital markets, and product markets. So if we look at if we look at labour markets um, first of all, then what we're trying to do in labour markets to, is to increase the quantity, to increase the quality, and to increase the efficiency of use of our labour force. So what can we do? What can we do to increase quantity? Well, one thing you could do is you could relax immigration laws. Make it easier for people from other countries you know, to come to the UK. One of the things that was part of Abenomics in Japan was to increase the participation rate. Yeah, so in Japan, yeah, um, yeah, the female participation rate is relatively low. Yeah, so yeah, um, some of the things they've been trying to do is to, is to try and make it easier, better, encourage women to enter the workforce. Um, not, not very successfully, I don't think. Um, other things you could try to do is to decrease income tax. Yeah, more people would be likely to want to work. Yeah, if they're being taxed less, or if you're um, if you're mean, yeah, you could um, decrease unemployment benefit. Yeah, you know, to force people to go out to work. So yeah, you could. I mean, there's a million and one things you could do here. You could you know, raise the retirement age and, and blah 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 blah. So quality then. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing obviously is improve the quality of state provided education. Yeah, so the government could do it directly, or you could create tax breaks, yeah, tax advantages, yeah, for firms, yeah, that run training programs. That might be more effective because, yeah, you know, the presumably the training that workers would get would be relevant to the needs of the business because the business is itself and doing it. Um, increased efficiency of use. Yeah, what you could try to do here is you could do things like, yeah, you know, decrease trade union power. Yeah, so um, so tra yeah, in, in the past certainly, yeah, trade unions trade unions have um, often restricted the introduction of new technology for fear that it would lead to job losses. But that then makes it harder for you know, for firms to raise their levels of, of productivity. Um, you could make it easier to hire and fire. So what yeah, effectively what you're doing yeah, is you are deregulating labour markets. So deregulating means having fewer regulations. So yeah, you make your labour markets more like you know, labour markets in the United States, yeah, where it's much easier for firms to fire workers than it is in the UK, although it's easier in the UK than it is you know, in mainland Europe. Yeah, um, all linked to that is kind of you know, zero hours contracts. Yeah, and, and these, you know, these have been legitimised by a series of governments. Yeah, where essentially you have a contract, there's no guarantee yeah, that you get any work at all. And therefore I can just say, come and work this week for 17 hours, next week I don't need you. So that you know, allows me to use labour efficiently. But um, as you can see, yeah, depending on which of these supply side policies you're looking at, yeah, some of them are more pleasant than others. Yeah? Uh, so yeah, and one of the criticisms of some of these policies is they're likely to you know, increase inequality. And, and damage those at the you know, bottom end of the um, you know, labour market. So we said that you know, labour market policies, you know, that's, that's one of our factor markets. Um, a second factor market that we're interested in is the market for capital. And in this context, you know, um, yeah, I'm thinking about uh, yeah, so, so capital market reforms. I'm, I'm not purely thinking about financing. I'm thinking about the goal, essentially, you know, of trying to get firms to invest more, and also to increase foreign direct investment, you know, so to attract um, investment from abroad. So how are we going to do that? I mean, one way is to decrease the level of corporation tax. Yeah, corporation tax yeah, is, yeah, you'll note it's spelling. Um, yeah, corporation tax is tax on company profits. Yeah, so if you reduce corporation tax, then A, firms have more profits to invest, and B, they've got more reason to do so. Or, secondly, you could increase government spending on things like infrastructure. And by infrastructure, yeah, I mean, you can mean, it, this can mean roads, but it also means rail links, airports, high-speed broadband, 5G, and so on. That's going to make it more attractive to start a business up in the UK, whether you're a UK firm or an international one, and that's likely to increase the level of, uh, the level of investment. Um, although, yeah, this type of thing, yeah, well, I mean, it, it tends to be very long-term. Yeah, anybody who's 
watched um, the UK's high-speed rail link um, yeah, between London, Birmingham, eventually the north. It, it unfold over the last 20 years. Yeah, um, yeah, knows that these things can take a very, very long time indeed. Um, and then finally, um, if we take yeah, um, yeah, if we take our, our third market, yeah, um, our third market is product markets. Yeah, so product markets are the markets where firms compete with one another. And our goal here is to increase the level of competition facing firms. Yeah, that therefore forces them to become more effective. So one way you could do that is privatization. So instead of having state-run businesses yeah, that face no competition, yeah, you, you know, sell them to private owners yeah, who then have to compete um, yeah, with, other, with other businesses in both local and international markets. Um, other things that you can do is to decrease the level of protectionism that yeah, exists. Yeah, so in other words, engage in free trade. Yeah, um, if you have fewer taxes you know, on foreign goods, then local firms will need to become more efficient to survive. And if you've got opportunities to compete on world markets, yeah, then again, firms will need to become more efficient to, you know, to make success of that and to fend off, you know, to fend off goods from abroad. Um, other things you can do is you know, deregulate generally. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and again, deregulation is, you know, kind of a decrease in restrictions. Mm. Um, so, for example, yeah, you, the, there are restrictions on who can enter certain markets, like um, in the UK, you know, back in, back in the 80s, 1980s, <laughs> um, yeah, there used to be only two credit cards. Um, um, yeah, there was um, Access, which was essentially a MasterCard, um, or, or Visa. Yeah, today, yeah, Barclay Card. Um, today, yeah, obviously there are you know, gazillions of, of, of credit cards. Yeah, you can get a credit card from your, your football club. Um, and that's because the market's been deregulated. Yeah, there are, you know, again, in the 80s, there are a handful of banks yeah, um, that you could choose from in the UK, in London now, there's you know, hundreds, perhaps thousands of banks. So hence, yeah, by reducing barriers to entry, yeah, um, yeah, we've increased the level of competition facing firms and therefore forced them to become more efficient. So it's all about yeah, it's all about supporting and challenging businesses yeah, with the goal of you know, encouraging them to invest and forcing them to become more efficient. Yeah, um, and a lot of that is going to come through either the market in which they compete yeah, or in the market for factory production.